of you can read yourself on the suspicion that many companies miss out a huge amount of profits because their understanding of leadership is wrong. How many of you could imagine that with a more humane understanding of leadership, you could achieve much better results? Now that we've taken care of that, welcome. I very much appreciate you are here today to learn about what I believe are three key ideas of humane leadership. When I mentioned a huge amount of profit, I'm really not talking about peanuts. According to a study by Gallup, the Swiss economy, year after year, loses about 14 billion, 14 billion Swiss francs in profit. Why? Simply because managers are unsatisfactory. And this figure is supported by a study by Great Place to Work, which found that every second employee describes their supervisors as incompetent. Well, the economic side is one thing, human fates are another. It makes me sad and honestly even angry to see people get sick and relationships fall apart just because the working climate in many companies is a bit small. Why is that the case? I really don't believe that the majority of bosses are intentionally bad managers. They are merely the product of a system that churns out to bad rule models that they themselves become. It's a system that believes in the greatest possible utility by enforcing the submissions and conformity of its participants. Where does the sphere of individuality come from? Well, the answer is as simple as it is multifaceted. The answer is the human being as such. One word, 7.6 billion concepts. And now, at the latest, everyone in here will realize this isn't going to be easy. Corporate cultures have evolved that the best survival strategy is to be a smooth pebble in the river with no rough edges. Unfortunately, none of us was born a pebble in the river. None of us feels as if we are being treated as an individual, as if we are being treated as a pebble. All of us born with rough edges, gradually ground into the smooth submission since joining the system. Here's an example. A year and a half ago, my son Robin came home and said, Dad, we wrote our CVs in school today. Cool, I said, let's see. I took a look at the CV and saw to them myself, Oh God, this teacher has got pretty old, pretty fast. A CV like that would have been fine 40 years ago when it was typed with a typewriter, but certainly not today when there's an infinite variety of creative options on the internet. So, what is it I'm saying? When people are pressed into forms, two things happen. Either characteristics that fall outside the form or norm are cut off without mercy. Or where the form can't be filled in, this creates a feeling of not being enough. This in turn creates the worst form of stress 
namely existential fear. And then we shouldn't be surprised when the number of mental illnesses is exploding with no end in sight. So respect and accept the uniqueness of each and every human being. In return, you will receive higher and better performance. So, is it enough to wait until people let off steam on their own? Maybe. But with some people, you have to wait a long time before that happens. Too many of us have already buried their individuality or have lived too long in the system or have indulged our weaker selves for too long. I'd like to make a key comment at this point of regarding self-knowledge if I only fill the form that's been provided to me, without ever having the courage to swell out beyond it, how should other people supposed to know that I don't fit inside? How should other people know what my individual needs and abilities are? Only once I know what I want and where I want to go, can I expect to be treated fairly. So be honest with yourself. Find out what you want and follow your heart. Let your surroundings participate in your insight. Only then your surroundings will have the chance to treat you the way you want to be treated. And this insight didn't come to me overnight. It took me 1,500 nights. I was a super smooth pebble in the river. I got a well-heated golden cage worth about 250,000 Swiss francs a year. And the more gold my cage became, the greater my willingness to suffer. Way too often, I was willing to be doused with cold water. In March 2008, the temperature of the cold water neared the freezing point. Once again, the entire staff was convinced to find out the newest strategic orientation. I was packed into a room with about 300 people. The air was so thick you could cut it. I was totally relaxed. I'd always survived exercises like that without any scars. Ten minutes late, two horsemen of the apocalypse, two members of the board, rode in with dark expressions. The information session began. First, they presented a slide, a slide I never expected to see. The slide telling me that my unit was being broken up. The rug was being pulled out from under me. Do you know the nightmare where you're standing naked in front of the audience? Well, at that moment, I knew that you can feel the same way when you are fully dressed. I felt 300 pairs of eyes staring at me. I had never been so humiliated in my life. What now? Right away, I began thinking about the plan B. Yes, you heard me correctly. I didn't thought about the plan B before. I didn't have a plan B to think about. So first I thought about thinking about the plan B. So you see how golden my cage was. 
I tried to remember who I'd been before my time as a smooth pebble in the river. What dreams did little Stefan used to have? In that void, I wanted to listen to my heart, but my heart was silent. My heart wasn't used being asked a question. So I was forced to power up my inner death reaper later. Only gradually, my heart and I find each other again. Gradually, I began to feel that my heart was beating and it was beating for the development of human being. At the end of January 2012, I pulled the ripcord and escaped from this golden cage. Yes, it took me four whole years. Even thinking about thinking takes time. Since February 1st, 2012, I'm a free human being and a happy business coach. I help people develop their strong points with the goal of a more humane workplace. I've experienced it myself. When you are not willing to find out what you want and you are not willing to stand up for it, two things happen. You become more and more bitter the older you get. And bitterness with all its symptoms will shorten your lifespan, which in a sense doesn't matter anyway because life isn't funny anymore. So, Follow your heart. Be you. Because you are terrible at playing any other role. So let me summarize what I've said so far. First, I respect the uniqueness of each and every human being. Secondly, I encourage others to follow their heart. So far, you could have got it from any old management coach for a lot of money using a flip chart. And for a little more money, your agency would have visualized it on an inspirational poster. And then, precisely then, nothing would have changed. That's exactly the point at which everything always stops. Why? Because we ourselves don't believe it can work. Because we ourselves don't believe it works when we follow our heart. Because we ourselves don't believe it works when we respect the uniqueness of each and every human being. And if we don't believe something works, it won't. What you believe, you have to live. You have to sweat it out from every pore. You have to stand up for it every day and dream about it every night. Oh, I could tell you a thousand stories about how faith can move mountains. Why? Better you move the mountain. Trust me. And let's embark on an experiment. Please sit up straight. Take your two palms and lay the lifeline on top of each other. Look at your middle fingers. For some of you, they will be the same size. For others, one of them will be shorter. In the next few minutes, you will grow one of your middle finger. Put your hand on your lap and close your eyes and focus on one of your middle finger. Your middle finger grow in your thought. 
all your energy is flowing into your middle finger. It's growing and growing and growing. You may feel a tingling or tickling. It's growing and growing and growing. Focus on your middle finger. It's growing and growing and growing. Now, a final boost of energy so that it explodes. It's growing and growing and growing. Now, open your eyes. Take your two palms and lay the lifelines on top of each other. Whose finger has just grown? There you have it. If you are able to grow your middle finger in just a few minutes, then imagine what you or we together can do, can change, if we really believe in it, let's do it for a more humane workplace. Thank you very much.